Previously on Pokemon Horizons, the Rising Volt Acklers arrive to Tetsuran Town to gather supplies, and as Needle Thing's streaming equipment goes haywire, Dot shops for a new microphone, only to find a wild Tinkatink -tink who's trying to improve her hammer. As Dot gives her the new microphone to use, Tinkatink -tink arrives to the Brave Asagi to show Dot her new hammer, but is found as an assumed culprit for damaging Orla's supplies. But turns out it's actually a wild Orthoworm who damages the Brave Asagi at the process. With Dot catching a new Pokemon and the Rising Volt Acklers making their repairs on the ship, what else awaits them before they arrived to Paldea. Let's find out now. EP Artiverse! This week, as the Rising Volt Tacklers continue to make repairs, Roy asks Liko to train with her. Just as the battle goes underway, Sprigatito accidentally injures Liko in the process. With Liko's hand sprained, this scares Sprigatito enough to return to its original home, which isn't too far from the ship. With Sprigatito gone missing, Lulo lets Liko know where she's headed. Will Liko be able to patch things up with Sprigatito? Let's find out. Unexpectedly, I didn't think Terrapegos and Hatina were going to be the ones who initiated the plot, but it's neat to see how supportive they are of Sprigatito, especially towards the end of the episode. But we'll get to that. Turns out Sprigatito made way to their original home, which Liko wasted no time in finding. But there is a few twists we need to talk about. First, Sprigatito's home belongs to a breeder named Mania, who owns cat-like Pokemon, but it's also where the starters originally came from. You know, the ones that were sent to the Indigo Academy. Mania even recognizes Liko right away from their interview, and we even get a little backstory from when she took care of Sprigatito. Most Sprigatito at her home are considered fickle and carefree, but she in particular was more carefree than others. But one day, an accident occurred in which a wild spy noobs trapped the other Springatitos. Our Springatito tries to rescue them, but unfortunately her leafage is so powerful that this accidentally injured her friends. This results with them being afraid to the point they started avoiding her, which is the main reason why Springatito ran away, because of how this affected her insecurities. It's also why she struggled to use leafage when we first started the series, which was an unexpected but an interesting callback. Manya also assumes Springatito decided to end her partnership with Liko because of this. This sets Liko out to find them and make things right, and after reminding Sprigatito of how important she is to her, they're able to strengthen their friendship and prevent history from repeating itself. Because as soon as they make up, another wild spy deuce traps Hatina and Terrapagos. Only this time, Sprigatito is able to protect them with its precisely aimed new move, Magical Leaf, which I'm happy to see we finally get to see its fourth move. The music was beautiful during these few scenes. While it's nothing super new, the way they used it to define everything Liko and Sprigatito went through was a very touching moment. The same goes for when they returned to the ship and finally defeat Roy and Fue Coco. Man, I was waiting for this day to come. Overall, this episode really knew how to put me in the feels. It's nice to have another Liko focused story and allow Spring and Tito to finally show some development. Also, seeing every cat like Pokemon, including all the Easter eggs, made this very fun and appealing to watch. If you're a fan of cats or just want to make yourself cry for five minutes, then this episode is definitely for you. We give farewell, Spring and Tito, a 9 out of 10. And we'll see you in two weeks. Or maybe next week. Let's see what they announce for Pokemon Day.